Okay. What's up, guys? We are doing a series in the Facebook group here for this week um, at 11 o'clock a.m. today. Uh, this is what, PST? Yeah, today, tomorrow, and Thursday, uh, we're doing a live training that is actually going to be added to our programs. So I wanted to film these videos live so you guys can get a lot of value out of it. Um, in today's first training, we're going over the seven figure CEO roadmap. And uh, this is, let me turn it around here for you, Casey. Thanks for being live. I'm actually going to turn on, boom, I'm going to turn on my Facebook live now. If you're in the Facebook group, let us know where you're currently at in business. Once we go through the stages, let me know what stage you're at because it's good to identify what stage you're at, what you need to be focused on, and what you need to do to graduate that stage. And in this training, you'll have a clear idea of what you need to do at each stage in your business. Going live, Mario, thanks for being here. Thanks for the hearts. Tony, love your face. Thanks for hashtag live. Put that up right there. All right. So this first training is going to be a little bit different. Um, we have the roadmap outlined, uh, but we're cleaning up a little bit. We're going to do another training for the roadmap a little bit down the road. Um, but the rest of the trainings that you'll be seeing uh, each day, today, tomorrow, and Thursday, uh, they will be the actual trainings that are going inside of our programs. So we'll hop into it. Corey, thanks for being here, dude. Uh, by the way, Corey, uh, Tribe of Buyers Live is happening in September. Uh, I would love to see you again. Corey come, came to Tribe Buyers Live and made uh, some sales directly at the event. It's really cool. Mario, good to see your face, man. Thanks for being here. Um, and everybody in the Zoom room, if you have any questions along the way, pop them down below. We'll be answering all of the questions at the end um, and we will hop right into it. So welcome. Um, my intention for you guys for this training is for you to identify what stage you're at um, in your business. So you have a clear idea of what you need to do to graduate that stage. We break down the seven figure CEO roadmap into five different stages um, and you get to identify where you're at, what you need to do in order to graduate that stage. All right. All right. So what you can expect over the next three days are some epic, epic trainings that are going into our uh, seven figure CEO program. Um, so we want to do this live provide a lot of value to you guys um, so you can get a lot out of it. Uh, again, the recordings are just for the course area. So please take a lot of notes um, along the way so you can retain it. One of my favorite quotes is uh, the shortest pencil retains more than the longest memory. So make sure that you're taking a lot of notes and really soaking this in. Um, also, uh, back and forth is always awesome. Um, I'm not a type of person that's really good at just like doing a training and just going right through it. Um, I love a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of questions, and sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes I get those answered during the actual training. So a few ground rules for our time together. Uh, main thing is uh, number one, play full out. Um, so that means taking notes, that means being interactive, asking questions, uh, having a back and forth, um, sharing your number one takeaway. One thing that I do with our coaching sessions inside of Seven Figure CEO and Authority Accelerator is always asking for takeaways because what that does is it helps the group as a whole. Um, it allows you guys to learn from one another and also it allows you to retain the information better when you're reflecting on the information. So the main ground rule is playful out, ask questions and share your number one takeaways along the way. Uh, if something pops up for you, like, oh, that was really good. That was a really good insight. Just pop it into the chat and share it with everybody. Got 22 people on live on Facebook. 
We have 15 people here in Zoom. If you guys wanna hop in, ask questions, be a little bit more interactive in the Zoom room, please feel free to hop in. So before we hop into the training day, I wanna share a little bit of my backstory um, and how uh, we scaled from zero to multiple seven figure business in just two years. Um, it was a crazy, crazy journey. Uh, I wouldn't be here without quitting drinking and focusing on my own personal health and my own personal life in order to um, really focus on my business. Um, and one thing that I love about entrepreneurship is that it's a perfect mirror for your life. Uh, your business problems aren't business problems, they're personal problems showing up in your business. Um, and you get to um, optimize all along the way and become a better person through the vehicle of entrepreneurship. So um, starting from the very beginning, kind of where my entrepreneur journey started, uh, I was in Chicago. Uh, I was working a nine to five job doing cold calls for a company called Sonoma Partners. Um, and uh, what ended up happening is I wasn't happy. So um, I ended up uh, one day, woke up and decided to change my life, decided to uh, quit drinking, to lose 90 pounds or 90 pounds. I did, I did this at Trap Buyers Live too. Uh, I decided to lose 20 pounds in 90 days. And uh, that transformation of, of setting a goal and accomplishing that goal in just 70 days of losing 20 pounds and quitting drinking allowed so much momentum to happen in my life. And now I live my life by setting 90 day goals, accomplishing those 90 day goals and allowing momentum to take over and just transforming as a person. So it hasn't been easy. It's been uh, a lot of personal growth as, uh, alongside of the business growth. Um, and it's been a crazy, crazy journey from being a solo entrepreneur to now running uh, a coaching consulting business of uh, 20 team members um, and in between a lot of ups and downs, but continually invested into myself um, and learned how to identify issues and overcome those issues with solutions. Uh, and it, we're going to be going through these different stages. There are different ways that you need to think at each stage. So, um, different ways to think, different ways to operate. So that's what we're gonna hop into in this training. All right, Dano, thanks for being here, brother. All right. So seven figure CEO roadmap. Like I said, uh, this is actually not the training that's gonna go into our course area, this training today, but the other five trainings that we're gonna do together over the next three days are going in. Uh, we needed to optimize this training a little bit more before it goes in the course area, but you are going to get a lot out of it. So I'm going to bounce between these slides and the Google document. So just heads up on that. Um, but let's hop into it. So why most entrepreneurs um, end up hitting a plateau as they scale? It's because they aren't following a clear plan for their marketing and sales. Um, they don't have systems in place and they don't know when to hire and how to find A players. So the reason for this is because we have a clear, there are clearly defined systems that we'll be going over the seven core systems in your business that we'll be going over in the next training in about two hours here. And you need to identify what those systems are, create sales and marketing plans for your sales and marketing systems and have the right people in place for each system in order to scale to seven figures, multiple seven figures. But there's a little bit different of a game plan when you're just starting out and we'll be going into that. So let me minimize this. So in order to have a business that creates uh, sustainable and uh, scalability, you need to have a clear roadmap. And that's what we're gonna go into. Uh, without a roadmap, you're stumbling in the dark trying to build your business without a proven process. 
So without a clear business roadmap, you end up chasing random marketing strategies without knowing which one are the right ones uh, for your business. Have you guys experienced that trying out all of these different marketing strategies and just being like, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work. If you guys can resonate with that, put a one in the chat. Uh, you, um, you feel stuck and overwhelmed with all the trainings that you should be uh, doing to grow your business. Uh, you're launching the wrong offers at the wrong time and you're hiring in the wrong order and sabotaging your cash flow. So in order to be a successful C CEO, you need criteria for evaluating uh, which strategies to implement and when. So the solution to that is the seven figure CEO roadmap, which we'll be going into right now. Um, and again, all along the way, please, please, please ask questions. I love a little back and forth. We'll be doing more questions during this session since it's not going into the program. So please ask questions in the chat and we will jam out on those. So these are the three core stages. You have startup, which is broken down from zero to 10K per month. And this is the solo entrepreneur stage. And you have the uh, startup stage, which is uh, 10 to 30K per month, which is the validation stage. Um, you have the core stage business owner, which is 30 to 50K per month, which is the growth stage. And then underneath business owner again, which is the 50 to 100K per month, which is the scaling stage. And then your third core stage is the seven figure CEO stage where we've been consistently hitting uh, 300K per month. So I can only teach what I've done. Uh, so this is where we've gone from 100K uh, to 300K, which is the CEO stage. So this is where I'm gonna be popping to the Google documents. And I would love for you guys to share what stage are you currently at? Are you in the solo stage? Are you in the validation stage? Are you in the growth stage? Are you in the scaling stage? Are you in the CEO stage? Let me know in the chat so I can get an idea of where you guys are currently at. Got a little delay on the Facebook Live, but it's okay. Go in the chat. Solo business owner, uh, solo, solo growth, solo startup. All right, a lot of people starting out. So I will focus a lot on that area. Fabiola is climbing up. She's crushing it inside of Authority Accelerator. I love it. And we got solo, Richie solo. All right. So one of my favorite things to do is starting to create my trainings inside of Google Documents. So that's where you'll see uh, a lot of the trainings that we do. Um, I find clients take a lot more action on trainings that are kind of down and dirty uh, instead of trying to make them as beautiful as possible. Uh, and then people don't take action on beautiful things typically because they feel like it's unattainable. So I typically like starting creating my trainings inside of Google Documents like this. Um, so what's the purpose of the seven figure CEO roadmap? Well, this is where you should put your uh, time, energy and focus at each stage of your coaching consulting business. So you maximize growth. We already went over the overview and let's start in the first stage. So first stage monthly revenue, zero to 10 K per month. So this is the goal of this stage is to go from zero to 10 K per month in less than three months. And this is the core thing here by building an audience on your personal profile and selling out your beta program. So what I recommend is that you find a platform that works really well for you. So what we teach is the personal Facebook profile. That is the best place to start. And that's what we have just kicked ass with. And then it's about creating the right offer. And we recommend launching a beta program offer and we'll get into uh, what that is in just a second. So starting out is the hardest part. This is the hardest stage that you'll have to go through, breaking through that 10K marker, right? So a lot of your time is invested into this stage. So 
50 to 60 hours per week will get you past the 10K marker uh, with the right focus within three months. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, but the faster you can do it, the faster you can grow to the next stage. So the question typically that happens here that you need to answer is who do I want to serve? This is what most um, people run into when they're at the zero to 10K marker. They don't know exactly who they want to serve. They don't know exactly who their ideal client is. And that's okay, but if you can start nailing down and keep asking yourself, who do I want to serve? The sooner you'll get past this stage because you want, when you get a clear idea of who you want to serve, everything becomes so much easier in this stage. And the mindset at this stage is much different from uh, let's say the stage of the seven figure CEO. The mindset here is a lot of hustle and grind, right? You've got to put in a lot of sweat equity because you don't have the ability to use leverage in this stage. So there are four types of leverage, right? So there's, um, there's money, uh, there is systems, there's people, and there's data, right? And what we're trying to do is build up cash flow in this stage by using sweat equity so we can invest into the other types of leverage, right? So there's a lot of sweat equity that goes on in this stage. And um, your mindset should be around working your way in. So you should not be focused on paid ads or anything like that. You put in the sweat equity, you put in the work because what typically happens at this stage is somebody tries to figure out paid ads and they're um, investing their money and they're actually going more and more and more in the hole and they don't have an offer that is optimized yet. What organic marketing allows you to do is test out your messaging to your audience and it allows you, it, it provides you time without a bunch of cash flow going out to be able to, um, uh, to be able to optimize your offer, right? Um, so big focus at this stage is building up cash on hand. So typically we're not using angel investors. We don't have this big business plan. We just need to build up cash on hand so we can invest into the different types of leverage, right? So big thing at this point is client results. I mean, at every stage, you should be just 100% focused on client results because there have been so many people that have come into the coaching and consulting industry that have maybe like done a great job or like made a lot of money for like six months and they're not generating client results and then they burn out and their money goes bye-bye, right? So we always need to be focused on client results and really caring about the people that we're serving. That will serve them a lot more and that will serve us a lot more. Um, little side note here. The reason why the majority of people invest into our programs is typically because of a testimonial that they have watched. So a lot of times when I hop on some onboarding calls, I ask, hey, what, what moved the needle for you to join Seven Figure CEO? And like, I would say eight out of 10 times, they say, I watched the testimonial by XYZ and they were experiencing the same problems. And uh, I know where they're at in their business. And, um, and that just got me to join. Client results are freaking crucial. Um, so get results, show results. At all of these stages, get results and show results. Um, my main thing uh, for the past three years has been massive and perfect action. Um, it has been overcoming the perfectionists within me. Or another way uh, it can be said is done is better than perfect. Um, because when we overthink shit, we don't allow ourselves to pick up data points. Um, another good quote is insight leads or action leads to insight more than insight leads to action. So when you're taking massive action, you'll pick up the data points you need to optimize and improve. When you're stuck in thinking stage, you don't allow yourself to pick up those data points, right? 
Um, another mindset, uh, what you need to nail in from zero to 10 K per month is give away the farm. One question that I always get, uh, when people are between zero and 10 K per month is how much should I give away, uh, to my audience in my marketing? I say, give away the farm. I did that when I was starting out. And what that allowed me is come from a place of abundance instead of scarcity. And it forced me to level up at the same time. And the people that were following me in my Facebook group or on my personal profile, they were like, if his, uh, if his free content is this good, I wonder how good his uh, paid stuff is. A lot of people came in and what people want is a step-by-step -step roadmap like we're going over right now. They want the step-by-step -step roadmap and in your free content, you can't really give them everything that they need for that step-by-step -step roadmap, but that is how you package up your programs, right? So, I know a lot of people here are in the uh, startup stage, zero to 10K per month. So I wanna hop into the mindset here and take any questions that you guys have. Look in the chat for questions. Fabiola says, A is perfect place to be, just here because my goal is seven figures. I can 100% recommend this program. Best investment I ever made on the line. Thank you so much, Fabiola. So Pop, any questions you guys have in the chat around mindset? If you don't have any questions, we'll just move on. All right. Um, Amelia, my struggle is around massive imperfect action. How did you overcome the perfectionist within you? Um, by the simple answer is by um, keeping promises to myself. So when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Like, um, uh, I forget her name. Um, if somebody knows her name, uh, pop it in the chat, but there's uh, the, the countdown rule, I don't know exactly what it's called, but um, counting down uh, like uh, three, two, one, and then just doing it. Um, when I was living in San Diego, what I used to do is like, I would go to the ocean, it would be freezing cold. And yeah, Mel Robbins, thank you. Um, I, to set a promise to myself and actually do it, I would go to the ocean, it was freezing cold, didn't want to jump in. I would just count down three, two, one, and I would jump in and do it and just short circuit my brain a little bit, right? So the, um, the fix to being a perfectionist is taking action, just doing it. So if you can come up with these little tricks of just doing it, um, counting back from uh, whatever number and just doing it when say one or just short circuiting it, that's, that's my biggest recommendation. Because um, once you build up momentum, the perfectionist in you will go away as much as possible. Uh, Peter, can you quickly comment on the difference between the solo mindset uh, you mentioned, Hustler, and the mindset of Seven Figure CEO? Um, are there any comments uh, you share about that later? Yep, we're gonna hop into that, Peter. Um, and John, how do you manage to stay patient and persistent even when uh, you're not seeing results? Um, they're like, I have bigger goals for myself. So uh, life is a journey and I'm never complacent with where I'm at. So I still have that internal feeling of struggle, right? Because I have bigger goals for myself. I have a bigger vision for myself. So I can still relate to that a lot. But the difference is now I have overcome so much that I know when I'm struggling, that's when I'm actually growing. I've never grown more when I've been like, when everything has been going well, I'm not really growing. I'm not really learning shit. It's when we hit adversity and we hit these problems and just shit blowing up in our face when, uh, when we actually grow, because we're picking up data points and we're learning how to optimize from there. And even though it's uncomfortable and it sucks, what I tell to myself now is when I'm in those situations, oh, this is when I'm growing. So kind of flipping it on its head. 
Um, you're never growing uh, the most when things are going really well. You're growing the most when it's a struggle, right? The worst thing that can happen is you just go numb and just like be reclusive. But um, if you can get over that and like surround yourself with the right people and keep moving forward, that that is what's going to allow you to grow, right? Uh, Fabiola, how are you attracting the best growth minded clients? I will answer that at the end. And Amanda, if you can save that, that would be great. All right. So uh, from zero to 10K, what's the strategy? Um, number one is identify your ideal client. Um, your ideal client and your messaging is a living organism. You're not going to have it 100% nailed down. We used to have this elaborate avatar sheet and have our clients fill out this like extensive sheet. We found that actually held our clients back. So we actually removed it to just a few questions for the avatar, right? So you've just got to commit to one type of person and don't, tr especially starting out, don't try to niche down too far. I recommend keeping it broader than, than keeping it super ultra specific. Um, so you are going to learn so much just by saying, Hey, I want to help coaches or, Hey, I just want to help moms that are overweight or, Hey, I just want to help. Um, uh, we have, we have coaches in the, the thyroid space, which is kind of a little bit more niche, but they were an expert at, at that. And it was a very common problem, right? So just pick one type of person, don't be too niche. Um, and you will learn so much by uh, sharing your own story and marketing to them. Your ideal client is typically just you two or three years ago. Um, it's every entrepreneur is selling a problem that they solved themselves, or at least sh they should be, right? So like Coca-Cola, huge business, there was somebody back in the day, I don't know who officially started Coca-Cola, but somebody back in the day wanted a better tasting soft drink. That was their problem. They didn't have a soft drink that they really, really enjoyed. They made it and then they sold it to everybody, right? They experienced a problem, they found a solution, they sold that solution, right? So starting out, especially in the coaching consulting space, you sell through your own story. I don't recommend um, like if you are a, a fitness coach, um, going after, uh, let's say the opposite sex. And if you're a male fitness coach and going after women who can't really relate to you, it's a lot harder uphill climb. Some people can do it, but I don't recommend it. Right. So ideal clients typically you just like two to three years ago. Right. Um, strategy, create your version one messaging for your ideal client. So what we teach inside of authority accelerator is problem, promise, process. That's how we identify the very simple uh, messaging uh, for the ideal client. Nailing down their current problems, uh, where they wanna ultimately go, what their desire is, the promise, and then the process. What, what links, uh, what step-by-step -step process links their problems to their desire, where they wanna go. That's your basic messaging starting out, problem, promise, process. Um, then strategy, build your audience quickly on your personal profile. Um, and inside of our programs, we go into exactly how to do that. Um, that is one of the biggest things, um, your audience. Your audience is your foundation. Um, it's, for example, it's this weird thing that like all of our clients go through if they're starting from zero. It's like they start getting way more engagement on their posts. They start getting a lot more people being like, uh, I'm interested in what you have to say. And there's this weird switch that happens when you start building an audience and having an audience where you're like, holy crap, like I can make one post, get a lot of clients, serve a lot of people. I'm never going to be poor again. Like that comes through building your audience. And there was a switch for me uh, when I was uh, growing my personal profile uh, three years ago. Um, and I put up one post made $6,000 and there were still people that wanted to buy. I sold out the program and I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna be poor again. And at that time I was $82,000 in student loan debt. Uh, and I only had just 
few thousand dollars in my bank account. Um, any who's uh, create your high ticket beta offer. So in this stage, you might be able to do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one and charge higher ticket prices, but you don't want to live there. So I recommend outlining your high ticket beta offer, right? And we'll get into that in a second and uh, sell your high ticket uh, beta offer through content, then conversation messenger, then a sales call, right? Um, so uh, the offer what we recommend for your beta core offer, group coaching, group consulting, whatever you want to call it, uh, between 2K and 10K. And it's a eight week roadmap to a four month roadmap. And inside of our programs, we go into uh, exactly how to create that. Um, this is just the roadmap for right now. So kind of higher level. Um, and inside of our programs, what we've created is assignments, things that our clients need to go through for each stage. You go through these things, you do these things, then you graduate that stage. So that's all inside of our Authority Accelerator and Seven Figure CEO program. So that is the uh, stage of zero to 10K. I would love to hear your guys' number one takeaway from the start startup stage of zero to 10K per month, uh, if you guys don't mind sharing. What is your number one takeaway from that stage? Once I get a few, we'll hop on to the next stage. Let's see, just take action. Best part of the program is all the support. Thanks, Fabiola. Um, do, do, do. Best takeaway, I have to take massive action. That's the main thing from zero to 10K, just massive action moving forward. Build connections, 100%. What's up, Nikos? Give the farm, sell the steps, love it. Marius. Work as hard as you can, get clarity, get focus, no distractions, and follow the process. Radio client is who you were years ago. Love these takeaways. Awesome. Um, Amanda, can you save that question as well? Oh, we have 29 people on here now. Sweet. What's up, guys? All right. So let's hop into the next stage. Uh, monthly revenue, 10K to 30K per month. Um, <clears throat> and at this stage, the goal of this stage is to go from 10K, 30K per month, less than three months by streamlining delivery of your core offer. Again, you just have one offer here. Um, hiring an executive assistant who can get things off your plate and continuing to build your audience on your personal profile. Cool. Cool. Uh, time that goes into this, 40, 50 hours per week, it's still a lot, but heck, it's amazing to move from uh, not making any money to making 30K per month and really being able to uh, invest into leverage. And after this stage, you can start freeing up your time through leverage and make more money. So question here is, how do I start selling consistently? So you have an offer, you're optimizing it. Now it's about focusing on your marketing and sales systems so you can start selling consistently, right? So mindset here, sweat equity, like we talked about, you're still working your way in. You do not, uh, at this point, you do not need to use paid ads at uh, this point. Paid ads are just a distraction. Um, you're still building up cash on hand, hyper-focused on client results, massive imperfect action, still giving away the farm, but this is where you start delegating to free up your time. So this is where you hire an executive assistant so you can get things off your plate. There are button pressing activities that don't really move the needle forward uh, for what your time should be invested in at this point, right? So strategy here is to um, identify the vision for your company. It starts becoming a little bit more clear um, and you wanna identify where, start identifying where you wanna go three years out, one year out, 90 days out, and back from there. And this will allow you to um, uh, attract better people onto your team. If you have an idea of what your vision is for your company and the outcomes that you wanna create each quarter, each year, and it's growth oriented, people wanna be a part of a business that is growing and that is serving their clients. So identify what 
uh, version one of your vision. You want to optimize your messaging, making sure that you are speaking more clearly to your ideal client's problems and their desires and the process that links their problems to their desires or promise of your program. Um, <clears throat> you want to open up a Facebook group for authority and audience growth. Uh, get your clients massive results and show those results off. Uh, you wanna hire an accountability coach to stabilize delivery. It's one more thing. Um, at, this, at this point, uh, you have clients in your program and what often happens is the coach or consultant at this point gets too bogged down with delivery, too many clients. So hiring an accountability coach allows you to have somebody by your side, this is a part-time person at this point, that allows you to offboard some of the delivery, right? You also wanna hire an executive assistant to get tasks off your plate. You wanna hire a bookkeeper uh, to have better insight into your financials if you didn't do that uh, in the last stage, super important to stay up to date on your financials and make sure you're legal and all that good stuff. Uh, you want to start ramping up your operations. We recommend Asana, Slack, and SOPs. Uh, you want to remain consistent with marketing and sales. Stacking up cash is crucial at this stage. 80% of your time should go towards marketing and sales. Um, and you want to run your first, what we recommend to our clients, uh, running their first quarterly client uh, meetup mastermind for upgrades and referrals. And we have our whole process inside of the program for that. Um, so offers here, uh, you're just focused on your core offer. At this point, it should be out of beta. Again, you're charging anywhere between 2K and 10K, uh, and it's anywhere between eight weeks and four months. So um, then we have assignments for inside the program of what they need to complete in order to graduate uh, this stage. So the big thing here, and I should go down to team as well. Um, <clears throat> here we go. We'll go down to finances. Uh, finances, you should have a bookkeeper. Uh, you should find a good CPA as well. Um, and your profit, especially in this industry, coaching consulting industry, should be around 65 to 80%. Um, <clears throat> and uh, your team looks like, should look like this. Uh, so you are getting the right tasks off your plate. Bookkeeper and CPA, uh, an executive assistant who might be able to also handle uh, setting and community management. Um, you're, uh, you're paying about 10 to $25 per hour uh, for this executive assistant. Um, plus, if they're doing some setting, you can pay commission out on booked and closed calls. So monthly, you're paying an executive assistant um, anywhere between $800. And then if they're a kick-ass virtuals or executive assistant paying anywhere of $4,000 on the high end if they're full-time getting a lot of things off your plate and you're scaling fast. Um, accountability coach, $25, $35 an hour, anywhere between 20 and 40 hours per week. Um, so that comes out to about $2,000 to $6,000 per month. And if those are your expenses, uh, you should be between 65% uh, and 80% profit. So on that stage, what are your biggest takeaways? Love to see them in the chat. All right, Fabiola looking so much forward to being on that stage. Love it. Uh, where do you find an accountability partner? Accountability coach are typically uh, those who have um, gone through your program before or somebody who has been in your audience and uh, knows your uh, processes. So, and we have a whole training on that inside of our programs. Uh, only open Facebook group when you're at the validation stage. Yeah, what we recommend is um, not starting with a Facebook group and a personal profile. Uh, you wanna get to at least 10K per month with just your personal profile and then open up a Facebook group because when you're splitting your attention, creating content for both, um, it uh, doesn't allow you to be hyper-focused and simplifying your marketing efforts. Um, but at that time, when you're at 10K per month, you can start investing into leverage, which, which allows you to free up your time, which will allow you to uh, focus more on a Facebook group. Cool, cool, cool. Streamline and delegation, love it, Jackie. Sweet. 
All right. Cool. Um, so next stage, course stage, business owner, uh, monthly revenue, if you're between 30, 50K per month, this is what you should be focused on. Uh, the goal is to go from 30 to 50K per month uh, in less than three months by growing your Facebook group, uh, finding and developing a setter closer, and uh, beta launching your MRR program. So our recommendation, this is how we help our clients scale, uh, is through our core offer and through the MRR offer. And I'll talk a little bit why uh, here. Um, time. So you're going down in time. You're looking at leveraging your time now and working about 40 hours per week. Plus, um, what I found, uh, the more you scale, the more time, more vacation days you can take off. So also at this time, you can take more vacation days for yourself. Um, question is, how do I leverage my time in this stage? So this is the core question. This is how, how do I start um, creating uh, systems and building out the team to leverage my time, right? So mindset here is you're doing sweat equity, still uh, working hard and uh, leveraging your time through systems and team, right? Um, you're working your way in through organic and uh, what we recommend and what we teach our clients is um, running paid ads to the Facebook group. Um, continue to build up cash on hand, client results, massive and perfect action, done is better than perfect. Give away the farm, but at this point, you can start putting more of an emphasis on what and why in your marketing. So when you're giving away the farm, a lot of it is focused on what, why, and how. You can start pulling back the how just a little bit because you've built up more trust with your audience with the client results that you've been showing off and sharing the what and why is a little bit more of an incentive to uh, join program, right? Um, and delegate and trust your team at this point, which is a really hard thing to get over, but we have multiple trainings on uh, delegating uh, to your team members and trusting them. All right, so the strategy at this stage is dial in your MRR, MRR offer to maximize customer lifetime value. And we'll talk about your MRR offer in just a second. Uh, you want to continue to dial in and optimize your messaging, get your clients massive results and show those off. Start dialing in your data collection and KPI tracking. So important thing to note here is I didn't mention anything about data collection or KPI tracking uh, in the previous stages. It's just not the best use of your time to be put on operational things in the previous stages. Previous stages, you want to be hyper focused on marketing and sales, building up cash flow. Now you can start looking at the operations of your business and start dialing in uh, data collection and KPI tracking. And KPI, key performance indicators. Um, and like I said before, data is a type of leverage too. Um, start to optimize your promo cycles for sales and mass. What we recommend is every four to six uh, weeks we teach our clients to do a promo cycle, which is either a five-day challenge, a three-day workshop, um, or a paid masterclass, um, one of those uh, every four to six weeks, um, which what we have found with that cadence, it has allowed um, us to scale because um, if we do a promo cycle every four to six weeks, that's usually the best timing to warm uh, the prospects up and then do a promo cycle to convert those prospects into clients. Um, start to optimize your quarterly meetups and masterminds for upgrades and hire a setter closer to drive revenue for your business. At this stage, super important to get somebody on your team to help you with driving revenue. Um, and what we teach inside of our programs, you can hire three different stages of or three different types of salespeople, um, either a setter, setter closer, or a closer. Um, at this point, you want to hire a setter closer. So your offers between 30 and 50K per month um, is your core offer um, and then your MRR offer in beta, uh, 12K to 60K, uh, and it's anywhere between six months and 12 months. What the MRR offer allows you to do is build up reoccurring revenue so you're not starting from zero every single month, right? It allows you to work with your best clients that you absolutely love and continue working with you. Um, in the coaching space right now, a lot of people are just teaching one offer, sell one offer, one offer. But even those people that are telling you to sell one offer, one offer, one offer, also have uh, a mastermind offer on the back end. 
Um, and what that allows them to do is have that reoccurring revenue so they can invest into their team, invest more into ads, all of that sort of stuff. So it's super important at this stage, start developing your MRR offer. And the first time we launched seven figure CEO was actually called Authority Accelerator Elite at the time. We only got three people in, but it allowed us to start building it out. Um, <clears throat> so I was like, oh, only three people, but they absolutely loved it. All of them uh, stayed around for a second year, so they must have enjoyed it. Um, and it allowed us to build out our MRR offer. Um, so here are all the assignments for people that are in the program. Uh, once, uh, once you do those and go through those, like the delegation training, um, you complete, oh, that's embarrassing. That didn't work. Um, but those trainings go directly to the course, you complete those, um, and then uh, you um, grow to the next level. So <clears throat> at this stage, uh, finances are between uh, 60 to 70% profit. You want to build up a lot of cash on hand. Again, you're going to have a bookkeeper on your team, uh, uh, executive assistant, uh, setter closer, um, and accountability coach. Right. And one thing to mention for the setter closer, you're paying about 10 to 20% per sale on commission on average. So I would love to get your guys' number one takeaway on that stage. Just pop it into the chat. Alex, what's up, man? Good to see you. Can you work full time and be able to start this program? Uh, we've helped a lot of people quit their jobs. So especially in the Authority Accelerator program, 100%. Okay. okay. Bunch of questions here. Let me answer them for you. Uh, King, is your MRR offer something besides your core? and add on offer. I know you do a core for a few months at a time, but uh, what? not sure regarding the MRR offer. So if you go to, down here, um, for your core offer, uh, this is for uh, clients to get a taste of what you do and deliver on the promise. So our core offer is Authority Accelerator, um, helping coaches and consultants uh, build their core offer uh, build their audiences and go to those 10 to 20 K months. Um, then after that, it's the MR offer. Once you're at 10 to 20 K months, you're ready for seven figure CEO, which allows you to scale uh, past seven figures or that hundred K per month marker in the next uh, six or in the next 12 months. So that's how it lines up for us. Um, and usually it's a process. You might not know what your MRR offer is right now, but the more you start uh, selling and delivering on your core offer, it becomes more and more clear of what your MRR offer can be. And uh, we actually have a free training over both those offers that Avery did recently. Um, if you want that, just hashtag offer uh, either on Facebook or here, and Amanda can send that over to you. Um, hope that helps. Uh, another question for the startup stage. Sorry for the delay. Uh, when you do lives, uh, do you do them only on Facebook profile, Facebook page too? Um, so we don't do much on our Facebook page. Um, we only use our Facebook page for many chat and for paid ads. Um, so we don't really do too much organic content on our paid or on our page because it doesn't get that much organic reach compared to what you'll get on your personal profile. Uh, Jackie, leverage your time. So focus on what you're good at. Love it. Helps you focus on dream clients. Value ladder, 100%. See a bunch of offers. Yeah. Dana was there. Avery's pre presentation was epic. Awesome. Cool. So let's move on to the next stage. Pass out one. So 50K to 100K per month um, here, uh, you wanna do this in less than three months, which is possible uh, by training your team intensely, uh, building out your setter team and bringing someone on to run your paid ads. Um, so your time investment, 40 hours per week might be a little bit less depending on how your team is operating. Question is, how does my team get ahead? 
Um, so that really goes into training. How do I develop my team? How do I bring the A players onto my team, develop them so they can execute on their KPIs and on their, their uh, processes and systems, which we'll be getting into in about an hour here where I'm doing a uh, systems one-on-one -on -one training. All right. So mindset here, uh, you want to leverage OPW, focus on leveraging other people's work. Um, again, you want to work your way in organic plus buy your way in through paid ads. Uh, you want to build up cash on hand, generate client results, show those off. Um, big thing here uh, is uh, plan to prepare or prepare to fail. Um, super important to have a planning cadence with your team. Uh, give away the farm, plus start putting more emphasis on what and why, like we discussed. Uh, delegate and trust your team. Focusing, focus on maximizing customer lifetime value. So that includes getting more upgrades from your core offer to your MRR offer and generating more referrals for your program. And uh, be a leader who creates leaders. Super important to um, develop your team at this stage. Um, strategy here, uh, you wanna build out trainings for your team. And mind you, it doesn't need to be you building out all those trainings, right? Uh, so I have a leadership team. Um, at this point, I think I had two people on my leadership team. They build out the trainings, right? Uh, dial in regular planning sessions for your team. Dial in organic plus paid uh, and work them together. There's always this debate of like, do I do paid or do I do organic? What's more effective? It's a system. They work together to optimize more sales. At the start, you want to start out with organic so you can uh, uh, so you can really dial in your messaging and dial in your offers before you go paid, but then you want to work the system together between your organic and your paid. Um, uh, one big conversion event for your MRR uh, program. So for example, we did Tribe of Buyers Live in 2019, um, and we did over a little over a million dollars in sales in just a weekend. So it doesn't need to be an in-person event. It just needs to be like, especially with everything with coronavirus, really big conversion event, such as a three-day workshop or something like that. Um, focus on data tracking, focus on system creation for each department, uh, really dial in your vision and outcomes, uh, start hiring solutions, not just people. We're gonna go into this in the next training, uh, which is around systems, but uh, having a leadership team that creates the solution for the problems that you're experiencing in your business, not trying to build out an entire system and then plugging a person into it. So you wanna hire solutions, not people. Um, and it's all about your team and your offers to get to the next stage. It's all about dialing in your team and offers. Um, <clears throat> so your offers at this point, core offer, MRR offer, dialed in, ready to go. So those are all the assignments. Um, at this point, uh, you have started building out a sales setter team um, and a sales rep. Um, and you might have a coaching bench or a marketing agency at this point. Um, you can bring in an in-house marketing manager or a marketing agency at this point, uh, depending on what your needs are. And then these are, this is our recommended pay. I always get asked like, how much do you pay a sales rep? How much do you pay a sales setter? Um, sales setter recommended pay $1,500 to $1,800 um, plus commission on top of that between three to 5% of uh, booked and closed. Um, and marketing agency, typically you're looking at 300 to 500 uh, or 3,000 to 5,000 per month. So what was your big takeaway on that stage? Amanda already said, be a leader who creates leaders. Love it, thank you. Dial in routines. Hire solutions, not people, but the team cohesive. It was base pay for sales setters. Uh, base pay for sales setters, my recommended is uh, 1500 to 1800 per month. Um, and then three to 5% commission of only booked and closed. Love it. All right. 
last but not least, um, 100K per month to 300K per month. Uh, so the goal here is to go from 100K per month, 300K per month in less than six months um, by uh, recruiting and training your leadership team, um, increasing customer lifetime value and optimizing paid ads strategy. Um, I could say 30 to 40 uh, hours per week, but I've taken six weeks off this year. Uh, so I've just taken a lot more time off since I've been at this stage. Um, and you're starting to fit into uh, the CEO role, which is more visionary. Um, it's less doing and it's more designing your business and less doing in your business, right? Um, uh, question is, how does my leadership team create the strategy? So we're going to be talking about this in the next segment on Systems 101, but there are only two things that you can delegate. You can delegate tasks or you can delegate thinking. At this point, you're delegating more thinking, more strategy, right? Um, mindset, leverage OPW, other people's work, work your way in and buy your way in, build up cash on hand, client results, um, prepare, uh, plan to prepare, prepare to fail, uh, give away the farm and start putting more emphasis on what and why, uh, delegate trust to your team, uh, focus on customer lifetime value, uh, be the leader who creates leaders. Um, big thing on strategy here, uh, recruit and develop a leadership team. Uh, this will allow you to sit more into the CEO role, uh, maximize upgrades, maximize referrals, um, really uh, dial in your marketing system here, marketing and sales system. Um, and then it becomes cyclical. So you get more clients, they upgrade more, they refer you more business. And that wouldn't be possible um, if you hadn't been focused on delivery in the first place and actually giving a shit about your clients. So that's how we differentiate ourselves. Um, if you can see, we focus a lot more on delivery and actually optimizing our delivery. So we um, uh, actually get the results for clients compared to just teaching clients marketing sales, marketing sales, marketing sales. It's a big proponent, but if you're not actually delivering on the promise that you're putting out there, then you're a shitty business, you suck. Um, so we focus a lot more on, on delivery here. Uh, expand the setter team, uh, add in uh, client acquisition channels. What I mean by that, you have like your Facebook group client acquisition channel, you have your paid ads client acquisition channel. You might be adding uh, like LinkedIn or YouTube, uh, those types or uh, business development. So like joint ventures and that sort of stuff. Those are different client acquisition channels. Um, build out your marketing department, uh, scale with paid ads. Uh, create cross sells for your clients to maximize customer lifetime value. You can do that. Um, you might just want to focus on your core and MRR offer here, depending on how, how dialed they are. But if you're able to remove yourself from the core offer and the MRR offer as much as possible, you can focus on building out cross sells. Um, so for example, we have done for you services for um, finding team members um, and also building out delivery systems. Um, so those are a couple of our cross sells. Um, and focus on optimizing your marketing and sales systems to maximize quality applicants. So that is the final stage for you guys. Um, I, um, I know that was a lot. Um, I hope you guys have a clearer idea of um, what stage you're at, what you should be focused on. What I recommend, we'll have the um, um, we'll have the training up for the next 24 hours inside the Facebook group. So what I recommend is going back to the training the next 24 hours, really take copious notes on what you need to focus on. Um, if you want us uh, to help you actually execute um, on those things that you need to execute on at each stage, we have the best programs in the world to help you do that. If you want to go faster, uh, if you want to shorten the learning curve, uh, we have programs for that. Just book a call with uh, one of our team members. Um, but uh, go back to the training in the Facebook group and check out what stage you're at, what you should be focused on uh, and do that. So um, yeah, that's it for this training. Uh, would love to hop into Q&A. Anything you have for me for the next 15 minutes um, to clear things up so you guys can take massive action on the training. James, can you accept me into the Facebook group? Absolutely, buddy. Cool. 
Thank you for the thank yous. If you have a number one takeaway you'd like to share to help the group, pop that in the chat. Um, if you have a question for me, let me know. We got 15 minutes Q and A, and then I'm gonna come back in 40 minutes and do a training on systems 101 that's gonna go into our seven figure CEO program. Andrew, I've captured a couple of questions that people asked earlier. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Um, so Fabiola asks, sorry, I'm really close to the screen. Um, how are you attracting the best growth minded clients and who is the best fit for seven figure CEO program? Cool. So first question, how do you attract the most growth minded clients? Um, uh, you, so you attract what you are, not what you want. Um, so the more I've grown, the more I've developed my skills, um, I've attracted better clients. So um, there's no trick to it. Um, it really comes down to you leveling up your skills so you attract better people into your programs. And then it will naturally be conveyed through your messaging and through your marketing that you're a higher level person, you're a higher level business. Um, so it's a process that you have to go through. Anytime you're in beta, like you, you've kind of got to accept that um, you're not going to get your ideal clients in beta unless you already have a big pool of people on your list already. Um, so uh, it's, it's a process that you have to work through. But like every single month, uh, we start getting better and better and better clients. And um, what you also have to look at is your messaging. How are you talking to your audience? If you're, uh, one thing that I absolutely hate is when people in their messaging, uh, what is it? They talk about um, why you can't do something or like kind of talking down to their audience. And like when they do that, they're only going to attract a person who talks down to themselves. And like, that's not who somebody I wanna attract into our program. Like I wanna attract people that give us energy and that we can give energy back to, not people that talk down to themselves and just like break themselves, which is part of it. Like you're gonna go through some of that, um, but you don't wanna make, you wanna make sure your messaging um, is, is talking to a person that believes in themselves and uh, that is just hungry and a go-getter. That's why I always talk about massive imperfect action, something I've lived by and the people I wanna attract um, either want to learn how to take massive imperfect action or are already doing it, right? Um, and then uh, what was the next question? Um, who is the best fit for seven figure CEO program? Cool, um, best fit, we have clients that are doing 10K per month. We have clients that are doing 500K per month. Um, so best clients are typically the ones that are doing 10 to 30K per month, looking to scale past seven figures. But there are some people that join that are looking to optimize their organic marketing um, and optimize their operations. And that's what we really thrive at. So either one. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch more questions. Uh, Gina asked in the chat, what if it isn't feasible to start that way in terms of uh, doing your personal profile rather than a group? Like, why would it be wrong to start with a Facebook group first? Um, it's a lot harder to attract those people to straight to your group. Um, there's a process in terms of attraction on Facebook organic that typically goes from uh, target audience Facebook groups to your personal profile, then to your Facebook group. Um, we have had uh, clients that started with a group and they partnered up with somebody to get people into their Facebook group that had their ideal clients. So you can start that way. It's just not the easiest way or the simplest way, I should say. Cool. Um, Casey asked, what about non-group coaching if you want to offer one-on-one -on -one to start out? Yeah, so to start out, um, you certainly can do one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. My biggest recommendation is don't get stuck there. Um, I've seen a lot of people uh, do one-on-one -on -one and then they just get stuck there and they get overwhelmed with the delivery of it. Um, 
And uh, you can take on like two, three one-on-one -on -one clients at a higher ticket price point, but I recommend doing group um, as soon as possible because we see better client results through group programs than one-on-one -on -one programs um, because they get to learn from one another. Um, kind of going off of that question, Jimmy asked, should you start another profile for this business or mix business with pleasure? Uh, mix business with pleasure, uh, if you want to say it that way. Um, I've had people from my high school uh, join my programs. Um, we just had one recently uh, who had been following me and she actually quit drinking and started a coaching business and then she wanted to scale it. So she joined Authority Accelerator and she's been absolutely crushing it in there. And she was from high school. Actually, two years ago, I had a kid that was actually known as a drug dealer in our high school that, uh, that joined one of our programs as well. So you don't know who's watching and how you can inspire them to uh, change your life by joining one of your programs. Uh, Charlie asks, can we get a handout slash PDF of today's content? Please. So these, these trainings are for the inside of our paid program. Um, so uh, uh, the hand, uh, the PDFs and the, the documents are not going to be available. Um, the recordings are going to be available for the next 24 hours. So what I recommend is going back um, and uh, um, in taking copious notes. Plus, it will help you retain it better. Um, awesome. We got another one here, Amanda. How do you get over imposter syndrome at the beginning? Uh, by uh, identifying that it's part of the process. Um, I went through imposter syndrome. I'm pretty sure every coach consultant um, went through imposter syndrome when they were starting out. Um, it's definitely, definitely a part of the process. Um, a way to mitigate it is making sure that you're teaching something you've already done and it's a part of your own story, your own path. Um, I see imposter syndrome show up in people more that aren't teaching what they've already done. Um, Kristen says, how can I get more info on a paid program, either Authority Accelerator or Seven Figure CEO? Um, just hashtag seven figure CEO down below um, and we'll shoot you over a link with more info um, and with an opportunity to book a call. Uh, so if you're in the chat or if you're on the Facebook live hashtag info down below um, and Amanda uh, will reach out to you. She's one of our success specialists. Um, Evolve uh, tips on nurturing your beta group and getting the best results. Um, <clears throat> so the most important thing, and, and we've actually sw swapped out our vernacular, like what we're actually saying about getting client results. It's not about more support. Your clients need clarity, confidence, and you need to create a culture of execution inside of your programs. So your, especially during beta, your group coaching calls should not just be Q and A. It should be, here's the thing, here's what you need to learn. Okay, go execute. And sometimes it needs to be directly on that call. Like take the action on this call. Like for example, uh, the big thing is, usually it's not about providing them more, it's about providing them less and identifying the 80-20 that's actually gonna produce the result. So um, we've been through like everything. We've had programs with way too much content. We've had programs with too little content, all that stuff. Um, we've learned how to optimize it. And it's really about identifying the 80-20. Like for example, the biggest thing that uh, produces the result inside of Authority Accelerator is around content creation and sales skills. So the majority of our calls are around content creation and sales skills for Authority Accelerator. And a lot around mindset, especially going from uh, zero to 10K or uh, 10K to 30K, a lot of it is around mindset. Um, so those are our main focuses inside that program. And at the very beginning, we do an onboarding call with everybody in uh, Authority Accelerator as soon as they join 
to nail down their offer and messaging. Um, because we found that is the number one thing that holds people back is their offer and their messaging and not being aligned with it. So we get them aligned with it, tell them exactly what to do, and make sure that they're, they're aligned with it. Um, so you wanna identify uh, the 80-20, uh, the biggest thing that, that's holding them back, um, and quick wins. Inside of all of our programs, we have quick wins. Uh, we have something called the mission post that you guys have probably seen uh, people post. Um, which has made our clients tens of millions of dollars just from a post. Um, so that's one thing that we teach in terms of quick wins. Uh, so you want to provide quick wins to make sure that they have um, buy-in into the program, identify the 80-20, um, and, uh, and make sure that they're overcoming their biggest obstacle right off the bat in the first week. Uh, good question, though. Uh, what new skill sets... Uh, you need to gain or to improve in order to become able to make this work. Um, <clears throat> so first thing that uh, you need to focus on is developing, this is a really good question, um, is developing the skill set that you want to share with others, right? So for me, the, the first program that I launched was around um, building an advertising agency or getting the first few clients for your advertising agency. Um, cause I, I built my advertising agency to six figures by doing door to door sales. It was kind of a unique strategy, um, to get an agency off the ground. Um, and that's what I sold cause I did it right. Um, and then I went to a messenger bots program because I used to sell messenger bots, uh, to my, uh, local clients. Um, and then it went to, uh, teaching Facebook group growth and all that. Now it's about developing CEO skills like all of the leverage. So it's changed so many times over the past three years. And I've changed my Facebook group name like six times. So don't feel like you're, um, you're cornering yourself when you're developing a new program. Um, just focus on developing skills and focus on um, actually accomplishing the results that uh, you're, you're teaching. And then um, you accomplish the result, and then uh, you put your own spin on it and you can teach it. Uh, if we were to go back to ground zero, starting a business from complete scratch without resources, and you had to focus on one thing, uh, what is the first thing you would focus on doing exceptionally well uh, with regard to your mindset? Um, I would probably do it the same all over again. Um, I would focus on myself. I would focus on my health. Uh, and I would focus on accomplishing goals. So like I said at the beginning, um, I set a goal to lose 20 pounds in 90 days and to quit drinking. That is where I would always start like optimizing myself and how I operate because that would equate to, um, <clears throat> uh, to uh, better results in business. Um, but besides that, um, I would focus on uh, like more tactical stuff. Um, I would focus on one client acquisition channel initially. So for us, it was Facebook organic. Um, and I would focus on um, all of the ways to get more uh, attention. Um, so uh, posting in other Facebook groups, um, uh, doing interviews and in joint ventures, um, doing, uh, doing those sorts of things organically if I didn't have any money and pushing them to one source. So cool. All right, guys, I've got to hop off. I appreciate you. Um, we have another training in 40 minutes called Systems 101. Uh, it's going to be epic. It's going to be available for uh, 24 hours. Um, and then we're taking it away. So if you want to be here live, it's going to be the same link. Um, and if you just want to hop on the replay, totally fine too. Um, it's only going to be available for 24 hours though. And you don't get uh, the, uh, the document or anything like that. Just heads up on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll see a lot of you guys in 40 minutes. James, thanks for asking for the link. Kristen, uh, we will connect with you on Facebook and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for being here.